All right, music fans, welcome back. Harmless Dave here talking about real drama, real music, real legal stuff, and doing it in real time for a few real people out there just like you and just like me. Folks, don't forget to check out my top 20 melodic rock albums for 2023. The video is done. It's in the can. You can go watch it. Take notes if you need be. Rewind the tape and watch it over and over again. It would really be helpful, and uh, thank you for tuning in today. So uh, the Hall & Oates drama, it continues. It's uh, really scary what's happening to these two guys. Who would have thought that Hall & Oates would have problems, right? They seemed like everything was fine, but apparently um, it's not fine. Uh, Hall & Oates, of course, have attracted media attention recently, due to Oates' efforts to sell his share in their joint venture, Whole Oats Enterprises. This development followed reports of Hall filing a restraining order against Oates. <laughs> it was later revealed that Hall was attempting to stop the sale of their stake in Whole Oats Enterprises to Primary Wave Music. Now, so far, selling catalogs has not been so easy. It hasn't been so cut and dry and smooth. Um, these guys are trying to get a big lump sum payout uh, for whatever reason. See, um, while these guys are still alive, uh, their music is still being played quite a bit on the radio. Um, one of the few bands or duos uh, that are still getting a ton of airplay and uh, I can't see that going away because uh, the music scene currently is so bad that you plug in a few Hall & Oates songs from the 70s, 80s, into the early 90s. Um, it, it's so much better than listening to the garbage that's on the radio. So, yeah, the programmers way up in the uh, top floor of whatever building who are deciding what gets on the radio uh, I don't see them deprogramming Hall & Oates anytime soon. So to sell your catalog off, I think at this stage, it's a little premature. Uh, however, the band has done this in the past, and I will talk about that. So in the midst of this legal battle with his a former musical partner, Oates actually uh, shared his desire to change his own focus in a recent appearance on a podcast. He says, you can't ignore the fact that Hall & Oates' catalog of hits in the 50-year career will always trump almost anything that Daryl does on his own or I do on my own, which is okay because I'm proud of that music. I'm really proud of what Daryl and I created together. All right, so um, let me comment here. First of all, this is a lopsided relationship to the music. Um, there's no question that Daryl Hall uh, was the creative genius in this duo. There's just and and singing. Let's let's not even even begin to to try to compare um, John Oates to Daryl Hall when it comes to vocals. Daryl Hall is your primary lead singer in this duo and deserves to be because vocally. Um, it's clear that he has one of the greatest voices in music history. Even now, Daryl Hall is just great to listen to. Um, John Oates is a like a flavoring. You bring in John Oates here or there to add a little bit of flavor to your meal, but he's not the main dish. It's been Daryl Hall since almost the very beginning. What's weird is their first breakthrough song featured Oates probably more than any other song uh, that made the band famous. Um, yeah, you had, um, the duet, um, redoing Righteous Brothers, uh, You've Lost That Love and Feeling, where you needed both guys, because that's what the Righteous Brothers were all about. There were two guys, and, uh, there was somewhat more equal billing in the Righteous Brothers, but again, Bill Medley ends up kind of being the star of the show, much like Daryl Hall, clearly, uh, the star of the show. So, as far as behind the scenes stuff, Daryl Hall has made some comments. He was on a podcast with Bill Maher a couple of years back talking about how he did all the arranging on Kiss on My List. And that was a big breakthrough song 
uh, for the new decade for Hall & Oates. That just catapulted them forward with such momentum. I can't think really of an artist, especially in the early part of the 80s, um, but pretty much throughout the 80s. They had a couple of duds later on uh, toward the later end of the 80s. I think they had one album that didn't do so well. But for the most part, they're hitting on all cylinders, and they got that momentum from Kiss on My List and a couple of other songs, um, and and really just could have done even more. I heard they were getting kind of burnt out, so they they kind of slowed it down uh, toward the end of the decade, and, and who can blame them? Um, they were on such a roll. So you got to give a lot of creative credit to Daryl Hall. And I'm not saying John Oates is a bad guy or he's a bad musician. Here's what he says. Here's what uh, John Oates says. He says, I don't like to live in the past. I make the analogy of what it's like when you go to a great museum or you're really excited to go and see all the beautiful paintings or the exhibits or whatever it might be. And then near the end, your feet start to hurt and you say, you know what? I can't wait to get out of here. That's kind of how I feel about it. It's just a matter of living in my present. So it sounds like he wants to forget about things. Now, keep in mind, Daryl Hall created a whole franchise around Daryl's house. I mean, this is very similar to what Sammy Hagar has done and, and other people like Jimmy Buffett, who ended up doing more than, than just playing the music. And now... There are venues for other sort of upstart folks who aren't getting the proper exposure. Some of those people can uh, go to one of Daryl's houses and perform, and you know it's like a feather in their cap. And people relate to Daryl Hall. He's he's more of a brand than Oates, so I think he is pretty smart, not only in the music business but just in business in general. Um, this is what Daryl Hall had to say. Uh, he says he's not so willing to let it go and move forward. Hall wrote in his court filing that the relationship between the two had broken down. This is pretty heavy. He expressed being deeply troubled by the deterioration of his relationship with Oates. He accused Oates of intending to cause him harm, particularly with the timing of the lawsuit coinciding with the beginning of his tour leading to considerable disruption and difficulty in his life. In his court filing, Hall stated, there is no amount of money that would compensate me for being forced to partner with an entity that I did not agree to partner with. Now, he's not talking about Oates here. He's talking about Primary Wave, and whose business model does not comport with my views regarding the whole Oates Enterprises assets. Now, What's ironic is Primary Wave bought a significant stake in Hall & Oates catalog 16 years ago. But in 2021, Hall told Sky News that he regretted it by saying, never sell your publishing. Maybe if you're 80, you know, um, and you're old and you decide to retire, then you can sell your publishing. But I wouldn't even suggest it then. I don't believe in that concept. It's all you have. So what's interesting is maybe Oates was operating out of the premise that, hey, we did it before. What's the big deal? Apparently, uh, Daryl Hall had second thoughts. Um, and this shows the lack of communication by these two guys. Obviously, they don't talk to one another. They're not on the same page. Uh, they're only communicating probably through their lawyers at this point. This is very similar to the way Steve Perry... Uh, deals with Neil Sean or Jonathan Cain. Uh, they talk to one another through attorneys. And it's for all of us who grew up with this music and are just thinking, hey, a bunch of guys got together. They made some great music. They hit the top 40. They made tons of money. And now as they get older, it's like everybody is fighting for every scrap. Now, I do agree with Daryl Hall that selling your publishing before uh, your time is up is probably a dumb idea. Like Paul Simon retired, and I think he ended up selling his catalog, which to me made sense. He's not going to be making any real additional money putting music out there 
Uh, and if he does, eventually, I'm sure he'll uh, sell it off to uh, whoever. But to me, this is just a relationship that obviously went sour years ago, and it's finally coming to the surface. And it, it's very public, which, again, is is kind of sad because you're always going to remember Hall and Oates. I mean, Oates has a point. Uh, as solo artists, they're not as, you know, uh, recognizable. But guess what? I'm thinking Daryl Hall can go out on tour and play pretty much all of the catalog because he's the primary singer. And then he can play a few of his solo hits, uh, which he does have a couple. Um, Three Hearts and a Happy Ending Machine. Great album. Um, and I know he's recorded other albums that should have done uh, better. But again, you're, you're dealing with branding. And sometimes the brand is more effective than the solo artist uh, who's doing an album that might actually be better than the branded music that is coming out. Um, but this is why everybody is so competitive, because once a name gets out there and people know that name, it's incredibly valuable. And that's why there's such a fight over the rights to keep that either money for yourself or to cash out and get money right away. Oates wanted to cash it out and Hall does not want to cash the rest of it out. So that's the battle. I'm thinking um, it will continue. And my guess is that this relationship is so fractured that you probably will never see Hall and Oates on a stage together again, which is really sad. Uh, I'm a big fan of both of them. I also recognize that Daryl Hall appears to be the creative genius in Hall and Oates. And um, it's just sad. It's too bad they couldn't have just been pals and uh, just went right to the end and, and not had these issues. But uh, certainly uh, we hope that maybe things will get resolved and uh, we'll see them again. But my guess is you probably won't. So anyway, folks, uh, that's the video on Hall and & Oates and uh, their legal battle and their personal battles and their creative battles. I'll keep you up to date. Uh, if I hear anything else about this, I will put it out there for you. Thanks for watching. Um, hope everyone has a safe new year. Please pray for peace in the Middle East and around the world. And I will see you soon.